We say it all the time at Active Self Protection, don't chase fleeing threats. Hi everyone, this is John with today's Active Self Protection lesson out of, you guessed it, Brazil. Today we're gonna learn some important lessons about awareness about having to be able to put shots on target beyond that five to seven yard window and about the dangers of chasing a fleeing threat. The officers are in the very lower left of our screen and pay attention to the top right now on the left moving to the right. You can see the guys that are walking down the street. These are our perps and a bystander walks by on the sidewalk closest to the officers and everything is cool. It's just another day at the office right now until we're going to see very quickly it's not and the gunfight starts. The officer is first up and on target very, very fast there and you're going to see him take 12 shots. Now he's taking a moment to reload and as he does, he's back in the fight and gets shot himself and the guys run off. Looks like he put multiple shots on target himself, but he was shot too. I wouldn't consider that a positive outcome and this one is over. Let's go back and learn some lessons. As always, there's eight lessons on our website. Let's think about some of the most significant ones here. It's always a normal day till it's not. Now, one of the things I notice is the officer really sees something as serious going on here and, and his job says, hey man, he's got gun in hand. If you pay attention really closely to him as things go down, you're gonna notice he never draws from the holster. He already has the gun in hand. A couple of things I want us to pay attention to. First of all is the bystander. As Soon as all the action goes down, he bugs out of there very smart on his part. Secondly, for the officer on the lower left, you can see this is his opportunity now. Here's where his beep is, the start of his confrontation when everything's going south and he only has a moment and there's his first shot. 1.3 seconds that he spent from the first time that he knew something was going down until his first shot was on target. And if you can look at the distance here, that little Fiat that he's standing next to is about 15 feet long. He's about three of those away. So he's about 15, maybe 18 yards away. And so that first shot came at much farther than the three to seven yard distances that most people train. So being able to put a shot on target at a longer distance, very, very smart. Now, as he gets that first shot, we can see that these bad guys start and you know getting that fibs factor. Fudge, I'm being shot at. I don't know if he hit him with that first shot, but even if he didn't, when they had significant shots coming back at him, they start falling down and going away. But here's where the tactics start evaporating. See the officer driving into them, but he doesn't use his cover and concealment. He doesn't think about the fact that you can see him now, he's out of bullets, he's out of rounds in his gun, he's reaching for his waist, and he's standing in no man's land here. You wanna use a cover and concealment that you have instead of standing in the middle of everywhere. Now he gets a gun back in the fight, and on his second shot back, the guy shoots back at him. So this is why we say, listen, once you've driven that immediate threat away, get out of the danger zone. And if you're an on-duty cop, this guy, I don't know if he's on-duty or off-duty, but you gotta do what you gotta do in that instance, but don't chase them when they flee because you continue to put yourself in the danger zone. Finally, I think this officer really needed some first aid skills. He needed some, some uh, you know, medical equipment on him or at least his friends to have that with him. So first aid skills are incredibly important as well because we can't guarantee that we won't be injured in the gunfight as well. But have those skills to put your shot on target, to be fast and first, use your cover and concealment, and don't chase fleeing felons to cover your ASP.